Welcome to the Wellness Connection with Dr. McMinn. Dr. McMinn is Birmingham's wellness doctor, practicing cutting-edge, world-class wellness medicine at McMinn Clinic in Homewood, Alabama. Each week, Dr. McMinn interviews experts in the field of integrative wellness medicine. The Wellness Connection brings you the information you need to optimize your health in mind, body, and spirit. And now, here's Dr. McMinn. Good morning and welcome once again to The Wellness Connection with Dr. Saturday McMinn. Morning. This is Dr. James McMinn. I'm here as usual with our moderator, Misty Wall Raymond. Good morning, Misty. Good morning, Dr. McMinn. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thanks excellent, for asking. Excellent, excellent. Do you survive in the heat these days? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness no hot flashes. Yeah, good, good, good. All right. Well, uh, that's because you're on those biodynamic hormones, Misty. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Uh, well, once again, we welcome you to The Wellness Connection where we give you access to the experts and the latest information in the field of integrative medicine. And uh, Misty, tell us who we have as a guest today. We have a special guest in the studio with us today, Dave Kalazic, and he is with a company called Watermark Medical, and they do um, home sleep testing. Wonderful. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning, Dr. How's it going? Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We've been trying to get together for a long time, haven't we? Uh, (laughs) uh, It's uh, great to finally have you here. Uh, I'm really excited about talking to you and the the product uh, that uh, we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, um, uh, I know my family has used it and has had great luck with it, and uh, so uh, I'm really uh, excited to delve into it. Uh, And a broader topic when we can talk about uh, uh, the concept of uh, sleep apnea, which I think is a big, big deal. It's huge. Yeah, yeah, and and, uh, I think we've uh, attacked the tip of the iceberg, don't you think? Exactly, exactly. Sleep disorder is, you know, we're really in our infancy at this point. It hasn't been well studied when you look at a lot of medical conditions that have been studied Mm. extensively Mm. for 40, 50 years. Really, we are just beginning to peel back the onion. Absolutely. So we're going to get into that in great depth. Uh, Before we get going too deep, let me tell you just a little bit about myself and my practice. Uh, We have a practice in Homewood, Alabama called McMinn Clinic, where we practice world-class integrative medicine. I am a residency trained and board certified MD physician. Also, I'm currently on the faculty at the UAB School of Medicine. So, um, all right, uh, so let's get into uh, sleep apnea, Dave. Uh, uh, once again, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, I, I know uh, um, we've uh, seen a lot of it in my practice. Uh, people come in with all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, the fatigue. Uh, uh, wives bring their husbands in because they're grumpy they're or whatever. They're snoring. They're <laughs> snoring. So, so um, you know, if you don't think about it and you don't test it, you won't find it. Really. Exactly. Right. And so right. It, I think as a physician, it has to be on your radar screen, and the symptoms can be so subtle. Uh, what are some of the symptoms of sleep apnea, Dave? You know, classically, Dr. McMahon, symptoms can run the gamut from things that you're already treating, hypertension, which can be directly linked to sleep apnea, mm. more commonly, classically, daytime sleepiness. Mm. So in feelings of either depression, it, it's tied to sexual dysfunction, it's, again, d- depression. Can we stop? Can we back up on that? Yeah. I kind of, I lost my flow with that thing. That's okay. Um, So we'll just start in. So we're going to go with the symptoms more so. Um, Yeah, how much, again, what's appropriate to do? Can you stop, can can we stop and start, or is that, do we have to keep going? We can just usually kind of take a pause. If you mess up really bad, you just kind of take a pause and then wait for about three seconds and then start over. And what they'll do is they'll edit edit it, they'll clip it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah compress and uh-huh. do all that cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, okay. they'll do all that. Okay. Yeah, so um, so uh, do we did we want to talk a little bit about what it is and what the so symptoms we'll, of it or what would be, is there any So we're going to come back in, we're talking about what is sleep apnea, and then we're going to go down to talk about some uh, causes of it and symptoms of it. Okay, all right. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. So Dave, uh, um, tell us a bit more about sleep apnea. What exactly is sleep apnea? So Dr. McMahon, sleep apnea by definition, if we go back and look at the Derivative of that word from the Greek, it means literally without breath. Oh, well. So what, what is occurring all through the night is that we have breathing that stops and then restarts, and this goes on all through the night. So we can look at a patient, we can, we can diagnose a patient that could fall into the spectrum of mild, meaning maybe we have a stoppage of breathing anywhere from five to 15 times per hour, Mm -hmm. up to, if we move into the moderate category, that could be 15 to 30 times. We would classify more than 30, 30 to 50 as severe, and you can literally get into a category called very severe, where the patient will literally stop breathing 50 Mm -hmm. or more times Mm -hmm. per hour. 
Mm. Wow. And, oh, my, that sounds pretty severe. It seems like you'd be worn out after a night like that. <laughs> you would be, which yeah. it, it ties back to, yeah. again, we haven't known a lot about sleep. And, and really, the even back in the 60s and 70s, they thought that sleep was really the body sort of completely shutting down, almost mm. the absence of activity. And what we know today is that it's really just the opposite, yeah. that the deeper sleep is what really drives us back toward restoration. Mm, restoration, absolutely. That's why I always talk to my patients about restorative sleep. Absolutely. I think that's huge. It, 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 some people, they say, doctor, I get to sleep, and I stay asleep, but they never wake up feeling refreshed. Exactly. They're never restored. And so, okay. so then you got to kind of delve into that, and why aren't they restored? And you have to kind of at least think about, once again, sleep apnea. So what are some of the causes of sleep apnea? So the, the causes can be classically probably the, the key cause that we have. And again, given the obesity of the American population today, that is really truly the number one cause. Mm -hmm. Sleep apnea, by definition, means that we have a restriction or a blockage of the upper airway mm -hmm. and soft tissue, fat tissue, that can shut the airway down. Mm -hmm. We also have situations where in children, maybe large tonsils yeah. could be at play, and that mm -hmm. could be a, a very minor surgical intervention to remedy yeah. that. Okay. Or it could even be a structural deformity where you have a smaller jaw that mm -hmm. would contribute to a smaller airway. Right, right, right. Interesting. Now, they, isn't there such a thing as a um, central sleep apnea versus an obstructive sleep a apnea? Absolutely. Right. And now, when we look at central apnea, and mm -hmm. literally, thank God, it's rare, right. much rarer than obstructive sleep apnea, but okay. it's actually a failure of the brain exactly. to tell the lungs to breathe in a very That's rhythmic right. fashion. That's hmm. right. That's right. So, um, okay, well, so then, uh, let's say somebody has uh, some sleep apnea. What are some of the symptoms that you might see with that? So, symptoms can be anything from, when we talk about this, the disruption yeah. with the bed partner, we're talking about very, very loud snoring. What that person may feel in the morning, anything from morning, morning headaches, the bed partner, if there is a bed partner, and oftentimes it makes it more difficult because mm -hmm. the person may not have anyone witnessing these stop breathing sessions, these choking and gasping mm -hmm. sessions that occur during the night. You know, the patient will wake up, morning headaches would be classic, dry, very, very dry mouth. Um, daytime sleepiness would be right at the top of that of that list, chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you uh, have a partner and you observe your partner kind of gasping and choking, uh, sometimes uh, loud snoring, waking up abruptly, then that might be a clue to get them uh, tested for sleep apnea. That would be, yeah. a, that would yeah. be a, a huge visual right. cue yeah. in terms yeah. of that. Well, or if you have a grumpy husband, uh, so I think my, my wife has suggested I go in and get tested. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> I, I think I've heard it once or twice, Dr. McMahon. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, what do you think, Misty? <laughs> Never grumpy. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, once again, there, there are two. Uh, the doctors, we need to be thinking about this and have it high on our radar screen as far as testing. And I think uh, uh, there are two. If you are suffering with things like headaches, fatigue, daytime sleepiness, um, uh, uh, just low mood, depression, uh, all those kind of things, you need to get tested. Or if you see your partner suffering with these things, uh, waking up uh, uh, abruptly, loud snoring, you need to get them in and get tested. Uh, so, so Dave, who gets sleep apnea? What are the, what are the uh, common characteristics of people with sleep apnea? You know, again, we talked about obesity playing, oh, yeah, that's playing one. a huge yeah. role. And yeah. again, if we, we think about what happens if a person lies down in bed, and especially if they're in a supine position, yeah. flat on their back, we're allowing gravity to work its magic, <laughs> soft tissue is pulled backwards, and right. now we're closing down that upper airway, and we'll either have a complete or a partial closure, and that can lead to the, the brain. What's kind of fascinating is that the brain will always make the critical decision if it has to choose sleep over breathing, mm -hmm. it will always cho choose breathing. Okay. Now we know that mm -hmm. these breath holding episodes by definition can be minimally 10 seconds or longer. What's frightening is that breath holding events can run the gamut and be well over a minute in oh, length. Oh my gosh. During, during which time we're uh -huh. seeing blood pressure elevate, mm -hmm. heart rate elevates, O2 saturation, right. oxygen saturation within the blood yeah. drops precariously. Right. 
and then the brain will make that decision, either literally breathe or but, die, and the patient will have that, or the person will have that grunting and snorting episode to literally pull them back out mm-hmm. and gulp for air. Hmm. And again, depending on the severity, that could occur the next minute to 90 seconds. It could occur more, more common. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting now. Uh, we talked about how obesity can contribute to sleep apnea. Can sleep apnea contribute to obesity? Yeah, that's that's a, another. The chicken come before the egg. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah, this, this it's kind of funny. Um, I read something the other day, and it said how hormones affect your sleep. It what? should really be how sleep will affect your hormones. Sleep is the first domino to fall. That's my nickname for sleep, Dave. It's Absolutely. the first domino because from poor sleep we get so many much other funk down the road. It, it, it's incredible yeah. because obesity yeah. being really one of right. the key characteristics mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. a propensity, a mm-hmm. tendency to have right. sleep apnea, then we look at the hormonal imbalance that is set up by right. sleep deprivation and we start getting into the hormones like ghrelin. Ghrelin right. is a hormone that will literally be there to increase appetite. Mm-hmm. Ghrelin production in the absence of sleep is actually increased. Mm-hmm. So we're really, we're, we're fueling the body, we're creating a hunger the next day mm-hmm. that probably shouldn't be there, that normally right. wouldn't be there, and it's been backed up in sleep deprivation studies. 